Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Sound 101. Today's episode is all about RF. We're going to be talking about radio microphones and we're going to be talking about them with Daniel Wu. He actually handles new media content for Fuji Films. You do Spotify. You also did a documentary called Race Across America. You are a location sound mixer and an expert on RF. Thanks. Excited to be here, Angie. So let's get started. That is right. Today we are talking about radio frequencies and interference, modulation, best practices. Literally, this is the guide we've been promising you for a while, and it's all about how to get the most out of your radio microphones. And I'm not talking just the Data Connect. As you notice, we've got some UHF systems here too, and we're going to talk about UHF, digital, the differences, and how to handle and troubleshoot both. What exactly are we talking about today when we talk about RF interference? To start off, radio frequencies are EMF or an electromagnetic frequency, which just basically defines them outside of mechanical energy frequencies, which means that they're not physical atoms moving. It's a change in electromagnetic fields. Uh, okay. We can't feel it. We can't, it's not tangible. And because of that, a lot of things can come into play when it comes to interference. Magnetic frequencies coming from any type of electronics, devices, even from the Earth itself produces EMF. Um, although a lot of different type of interference won't catch on your systems that we use for sound, a lot of it still will. Technology in that application applies to us sound mixers on set because you know, it's not necessarily logical to run cables everywhere for every single mic you're using. One of the more common ways to use wireless on set for us sound mixers is well known, like wireless lavalier microphones that are hidden in costumes. Mm -hmm. But there's also wireless devices that send audio to camera, to send audio to yep. monitors for the producers and such like that. So there's a lot of different channels, separate channels of data going around on set. And when we talk about radio frequency on set, although it, yes, it applies a lot to us as sound mixers, Nowadays, with a lot more new technology, we, it, it really applies to every single department out there. At this point, yeah. And, and I think the new role, though, for most sets is the sound mixer is in charge of most RF. If I can't hear the actor actress, okay, that's, that's mission critical. Right. <laughs> I can't hear you. We often get in charge of, hey, if there's something that's causing interference on set, mm -hmm. we can make that call sometimes mm -hmm. to shut it down. Absolutely. Uh, or at least make the case to someone on set, like an AD, hey, I need this shut down, otherwise you're gonna have a hard time in post. Absolutely, or find a way to troubleshoot with those departments that have issues so everyone can work seamlessly, because that's another thing too with uh, bandwidth is that there's too many cooks in the kitchen, people step on each other, there's no you know, real coordination going on. So we know that you know this kind of stuff is very important and the coordination of it is very important. Now what are the differences though between something like a UHF and a 2.4 gigahertz system? In terms of functionality, they do basically the same thing. But in terms of how they do it, that's where it really comes into difference into play. To begin, you know, we have 2.4 gigahertz, which I think is fairly recognizable by most people because we use it in everyday things like Wi-Fi routers and such like that. Um, even our Bluetooth systems, our wireless speakers and things like that connect on a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Although it's not the same protocols as Wi-Fi, we're still filling those bandwidth with more devices. And with 2.4, we're using a completely different spectrum that's a way higher on the gigahertz spectrum rather than single megahertz you know we're talking about 2400 megahertz rather than you know 500 and uh, UHF is a completely different radio spectrum different frequencies completely from I believe it's 300 megahertz to one kilohertz if a transmitter is UHF that means it operates within that bandwidth of radio um, doesn't mean it operates within the entire band but at least part of it exists right. within it and the, the US we have a very clear separation of what blocks we can use you know we, the government tells the FCC tells us what frequencies are legal to use unlicensed and what are you need license to use for. Um, unfortunately, that bandwidth space for unlicensed work that we use is getting smaller and smaller as time goes on. Uh, in 2018, we just lost 600 megahertz and above. Yeah, and that's actually getting all implemented, what, like the end of, June? Yeah, something like that. Something like that, end of, of 2020? Next year, next year, yep. Something like that, yeah. Each city is slowly gonna lose it one by one by yeah. one. Here in Los Angeles this month, we just lost it. Yep. <laughs> um, and like literally overnight, you could see the shift. Yeah. Because now T-Mobile 
is like turning on all their towers and they're sitting on that frequency spectrum. Absolutely. If you actually are into this UHF band space, check out stuff like uh, the UK, which I think has channel 38. Yep. Most of the EU is 50 milliwatts, whereas here in the US we can go up to 250. Yeah, yep. Uh, Japan, I want to say, is only 10 milliwatts. Theirs are very strict. Very strict in Japan, but high density of population yeah. is the reason for that. Absolutely. Um, you don't want to be stepping on your neighbor. Absolutely. That's what a lot of these rules are for, yeah. is to actually help you be more courteous to others and them be courteous to you. And that's a great point to bring up, too, in this discussion with RFI is a great example of that is, you know, depending on where you're shooting, even an environment like Japan as a city completely changes the, the scope of what kind of wireless you're using just based on the location, the people there, the, the type of stuff they have all crammed together. This stuff really becomes important, whether you're selecting a 2.4 gigahertz system or UHF, but there's also a lot of pros and cons to both as well. Now, they operate in separate bands and different frequencies, but they both suffer from RFI. Mm -hmm. What can be the cause of RFI in the world of UHF? And what is the cause of RFI in 2.4? So with RFI for these two different systems, the types of interference that you can get come from two different places. For 2.4, we're looking at more like consumer type items like your cell phone, Wi-Fi routers. A big reason for that is uh, the chips for 2.4 and stuff are small and they fit and it's also consumer wide. Like everyone uses 2.4 frequencies. Although there's a lot more, you know, there's a lot of sources of RFI that come from 2.4, all those sources are the easiest to manipulate. But with UHF, we're looking at a completely different source of RFI. I mean, with UHF, it can get somewhat complicated at this point um, because we're dealing with a lower bandwidth. You will see RFI from things like TV stations, like uh, other electronics creating RF interference or electromagnetic frequency interference and like FM towers for radios and stuff like that. I know a lot of mixers have issues if they're shooting real close to different types of broadcast towers, it can cause a lot of RFI. Um, and the reason that causes interference is not because it may, it may not be on your frequency, but the sheer power of radio power coming out of those towers oh, yeah. can cause so much problems in your modulation within your, you know, your system or pick up through your cables and things like that. So I've heard a few stories myself about situations like that, which can be a little crazy. You can't <laughs> turn off the local TV station. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you can't ask a, you know, somebody to shut down some kind of mobile network just for you because you're getting a little bit of, you know, T-Mobile. <laughs> all Americans can benefit from 5G. So we have all these issues. We know what they are. Now, what are some preventable ways that we can kind of get around this? So there's a lot of things we can do to prevent this. With 2.4, a lot of the big culprits to RFI are going to be your big power items, really. And the biggest culprits we can obviously look at right away are Wi-Fi routers. Now, Wi-Fi routers, we don't just have to worry about turning them off. They do also cause a lot of RF spray in close proximity. Absolutely. And RF spray is when we have something that's transmitting at a specific radio frequency and having a little power outside of that designated frequency that it's supposed to be transmitting in. And with Wi-Fi routers, oftentimes it is a proximity effect. And for most RF spray, it is because of the power that it's leaking out is not going to extend really far. But at the same time, that is a big thing to keep in mind when you're stepping on the set, knowing where physically the Wi-Fi router is. And not setting up next to it. <laughs> exactly. With that, with 2.4, a lot of this issues really comes with proximity. Proximity. So one thing you can do right away to deal with it is just find out where it's coming from and it's probably near you. You can maybe take a step away or find a way to give yourself distance from that source. It's things like move your cell phone from the same pocket as your transmitter exactly. to like say the other side of your body in the other pocket. Exactly. Another thing is also making sure you coordinate with other departments on set. Your ACs might be using follow focuses or other wireless gear that is also on a 2.4 gigahertz band. Same with the lighting crew, the uh, electricians might be using um, wireless control systems, you know, that control the lights and that use 2.4 gigahertz bands. Mm -hmm. um, that's the RFI that in a sense you can see, right? In a yeah. sense, you can see the router and stuff. UHF, that's the RFI that it's difficult to see in most scenarios, you know? And that's what makes it kind of a little more difficult to troubleshoot, especially when you're dealing with high power RFI coming mm -hmm. from towers, things like that. That's stuff that we cannot control. So it becomes you kind of changing your procedures rather than trying to be able to manipulate your environment. Especially if you are, like you're dealing with signals that could be a mile away if you're in the UHF world. And the key to that is not actually overpower it. 
Sometimes the key is not hear it at all. We often think about, oh, just stronger is better. But if you go to a rock concert and everything, if you put in earplugs, you can get rid of the overall volume, but you still hear the concert. There are earplugs for your RF. Right. Uh, RF venue has a antenna called the spot. Yeah. It's a giant mat that literally only sees everything above it and like a hundred feet left and right. It's really cool for UHF systems, especially if you're working on a set or in a back lot or some kind of fixed location, you install one of these and you're good to go. And you could be on the exact same frequency as someone else 200 feet away and you couldn't even see them. Uh, the same thing exists also with the idea of just little fixed antennas. If you were to use some actually smaller, less sensitive antennas on your receiver, the odds of you seeing a Wi-Fi router from like across the street go way down. And then your transmitter, which may be the most powerful thing in the room now, is the only thing it sees. And you may actually get more reception from a weaker antenna. So sometimes less is more. Yeah. So let's talk about now the idea that you could potentially also be causing your own RFI. Yeah. It's not just about dealing with, you know, transmissions that we get from the outside or interference we get from other places. Sometimes you can create your own interference within your own systems. And a big cause of this sometimes is depending on how much power you're putting into your systems as well. For example, if you have a transmitter that's operating at, at the highest power that you can get it to, and it's really close to your system, you could actually cause harmonics within your receiver that create unoriginal frequencies that did not exist in the original transmission. Yeah, the, the actual terminology is overmodulation, just like you would get with audio clipping yeah. and overmodulation where it sounds distorted, you can actually do that to an RF signal as well, which your front ends and your tracking and your receiving in the actual receiver sits there and just goes, nope, I'm done. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> You're sending me too much. I can't handle the data. With that though, it's obviously it's a very easy way to deal with it. You're fully in control with all those systems. Absolutely. But you gotta know when it's happening and then knowing where to start to find the solution for that. Now, would you normally then start at the lowest power setting and then work your way up? Absolutely. I think that's like a really good way to set your RF power because if you start on the opposite spectrum down, you might still cause that later in the end. It might just not be hearing in that moment. You might get closer, things change you know, during the day, and you might get close enough where you cause too much RF power or something like that. But if you start from the bottom and wake your way up, then you know at what point you hit where I get a good enough signal, but I know I'm not outputting more than I ever need. But not all systems actually make steps in RF power that are actually useful. Some make very large steps, but I would say a lot of systems nowadays have a good amount of steppage to it where it's radio power. So let's also talk about coordinating our frequencies because mm -hmm. that can also be an issue where we're stepping on our own signals. Absolutely. So for UHF, if you have too many signals too close together, we can cause intermodulation with that and we can cause a lot of issues with the frequencies just getting confused with each other, you know? It's like putting two colored gels a little too close when they cross over, that middle stuff kind of gets a little blended. And for our radio system, that's difficult to deal with. So making sure that you coordinate with enough gaps between and enough space between each channel and making sure the channels are in an appropriate position relative to other radio power or interference around you is extremely important. There's a um, lot of coordinating having to go on oh here. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, With UHF, you're doing that yourself. You got to scan the area, know how to read the analyzer, first of all, and know which areas look clean to me and which areas might be too tight for me to fit a bit like a, a channel in or something like that. And with some other systems though, you can actually just, a lot of them can figure that out for you, the spacing of those channels, mm -hmm. which in my opinion, is a big time saver. Like frequency coordination can often take a lot of time, especially if you're in a location that has a lot of interference. Dealing with that interference and making enough space for yourself can take a decent amount of time out of your day. When you did Road yeah. Across America, you did the DD Connect, I believe, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Having 2.4, having the ability to you know be on that one frequency and not having to do frequency scans wherever I'm going makes it really, really versatile for something like that. Again, we're going back to environments. Knowing your environment, knowing what you're shooting in really will help you prepare 
to make sure you're bringing the right radio like gear onto set. People at home don't realize this episode probably is going to end up being under 20 minutes. <laughs> but Daniel and I have actually been talking about this for like three hours. Yeah, now. about RF problems. <laughs> so we've had a lot of fun. Thank you for coming on, Daniel. Thank you for having me. If you have any more questions about RF, if you have any issues with your wireless, doesn't really matter if it's UHF or 2.4, uh, drop a comment below and tell us that question. So we can actually help you. I mean, we love helping people. We love getting things out there, Absolutely. getting the information. Hey, don't forget to hit subscribe. We have new videos coming out every single Monday. Hit that bell for the notifications so you get alerted when a new video comes out. Hey, I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Thank you for watching.